their uh, microphones just to limit the feedback, etc. And I think your mute button is down on the bottom of the, the screen if you're similar to mine. Um, and it's well, it's up to you whether you want to have a camera on or camera off. Um, we will judge you on your background and bookshelves and those sort of things. So it's up to you. Um, if you do have questions, it's going to be very difficult to uh, answer questions um, as we go through this, but we'll do our best to get them. But if you do have some, just put them in the chat uh, function, which you'll see up in the right corner of your your screen, and uh, we'll do our best to to address them at the very least. We'll capture them there, and uh, we can go from there. So first of all, I just want to thank everyone uh, for their attendance. Um, I'll comment that uh, we had uh, an in-person open house uh, a year or so ago, and I think we had three attendees. So either it really works to do things virtually, or this topic is, uh, is an exciting one uh, to have people out for. But uh, um, we do appreciate it. And honestly, it's really great to connect with, uh, with people here. So we're up over 100, uh, 120 people on here so um, it, it's great for me to, to see this kind of a, a turnout um, I really the patience and, and faith that everyone has had in us has been very impressive we just completed our returning player registration period and we are at 98% of our uh, returnees which is excellent uh, for us and that really does uh, encourage us and show and shows that um, our members do have faith in uh, in the association and uh, are excited about getting back to, to hockey and hopefully uh, some normalcy um, come the fall. So, so we're excited about that. Our new player registration is now open. So if anyone um, has a, a neighbor, friend, family member that's interested in joining the association, now would be the time to spread the word. And, and we'd love to welcome as many new kids into the association as well. So uh, the purpose of this meeting tonight, again, there's no big major announcement or anything along those lines. Um, and, and I don't promise to have all the answers or a crystal clear picture of, of what's going to happen. But uh, I thought it was important just to update the members, um, the members here um, with regards to just trying to keep everybody up to date on everything that we know. Uh, it's a very changing environment, and, and we don't want to uh, keep people in the dark. So we want to tell you as much as we have uh, so far, and and give some vision towards what we see for the future. So, um, just by way of introduction, we have a few of our. Uh, I think most of our board members are on. So, uh, President uh, Jim Barron and the rest of our board are are here as well, as well as Suzanne from our office. Uh, Shane Koss and Matt Earhart, who are a big part of our, our team as our player development leads, uh, believe it or not, are not here because they're on the ice, shocking, uh, somewhere, but uh, they're up to speed and have contributed to uh, the conversation here tonight. So, um, so again, our, our uh, agenda for tonight um, is to kind of give an overview of the return to play process that we've been through so far. Uh, just so you kind of know uh, the lay of the land and, uh, and what's been going on behind the scenes and, and what kind of um, groups we've been working with uh, to get to where we are even right now. Um, talk a little bit about what we're working on for our own semi-hockey return to play plan that, that uh, we're required to put together. And then just sort of share some scenarios of what the future could look like heading into the, heading into the fall. Again, lots of unknowns, but we'll, we'll share some ideas of where we think it might be going. Um, we'll talk a bit about some semi-hockey specific contingencies, so just some specific things that, that we know are coming up on our horizon that are major events like uh, hockey school, rep evaluations, um, tournaments, those type of things, and what our plans are for, for those things. And we'll try and address, we had a few questions come in in advance um, if they're not covered throughout the rest of the presentation, I think most of them will be, but uh, we'll try and um, address those uh, as well at the end. Uh, so next, first up, the return to play process. And as you can imagine, a lot of work is, <laughs> has gone into uh, even getting us to where we are thus far and, and trying to build a return to play framework. And we've worked with numerous different uh, agencies and been involved in that. But uh, one thing I can assure you of for sure is that semi-hockey has been at the, the forefront and front and center in those discussions um, and really leading the way on the minor hockey front um, around the province here. So we've had a good seat at the table 
and, and hopefully we've influenced things in a positive way, but at the very least we've been able to be um, at the center of all the information that uh, that has been coming down. And that's why we, we want to share that with you guys, our, our members, so you can be you know as much up to speed as we possibly can get you. So, so the process, um, the way it started, the way it starts out, um, you know, at the very top of the chain is our um, health department, provincial health officer, uh, and the government. So I think everybody's a Bonnie Henry fan <laughs> that's on here, and we all march to her uh, her orders, and it's no different uh, for us in the in the sports world. Um, so they they kind of set the tone and provide the broad framework and guidelines, and I'm sure you're all dealing with that in your own industries or areas that uh, that you're uh, responsible for, or even with kids going back to school, um, et cetera. So, you know, those are the things like social distancing, um, limits of 50 people in a, in an area, um, enhanced hygiene practices and the different phases, um, that we, we go through. Um, and of course, uh, as you heard today that the province is going into phase three, it's a little different in the sports world, but it was good news. Uh, nonetheless, and, and obviously we're happy with the progress that, uh, that the province is making on the, the health and safety side and the, the um, positive results that we're seeing. And I think it bodes well for, for us in the sports world. So the provincial government uh, kind of sets that framework. And then there's an agency called Via Sport that uh, is the, the agency that interfaces with the government on behalf of all of sport or all of the sport organizations in the province. So they were tasked with building uh, a more kind of sport uh, um, design plan based off of those uh, guidelines from the government. So, so they've done that again with some broad, um, broad definitions and some broad guidelines uh, and a multi-phased uh, approach um, that they have. They have there. So, not really all that different than than what the government has put out, but a little bit more related to sports. And you know, some of the the broad things are you're seeing that the outdoor sports are coming into play a little quicker than indoor sports. Uh, there's a move from sort of skill-based activity, uh, gradually moving into more competitive um, areas, those sort of things. And that comes from those uh, via sport guidelines. And where we interface on the hockey world is uh, Hockey Canada then interjects into, uh, into that as well. Uh, and they put together, I think some of you may have seen the, the plan. So Hockey Canada interjects a little bit on the, the hockey specific side. So this is where some guidelines of come out around um, water bottles, dressing rooms, uh, on ice officials, uh, equipment, those type of things. But again, very broad because um, every region in Canada is quite different in their experience with uh, with COVID. As, as we know, um, Quebec and Ontario are uh, quite different in terms of where they're at. Um, and, and BC is, and, and, you know, if you look at Yukon or some of those places that are governed by uh, by Hockey Canada, every region's a little bit different. So th those guidelines are quite flexible, uh, the initial ones that they came out with. So BC Hockey is kind of our immediate next uh, governing body. And um, so they kind of just coordinate all these plans um, together and essentially house them in one area and give us some direction on how to build uh, our own specific, uh, specific plans from there. So. That's kind of where we're at right now. We've been through all those people have published their guidelines and we're well aware of, of where they are and, and you guys could access them as well. Um, if you we don't have them on our website yet, we'll make sure we get them up there but uh, or links to them at least through those different agencies. Um, so then the, the task is the local minor hockey associations uh, are tasked with designing their own specific safety plans that might be unique to their, their area um, that they're in and their situation. Um, and this is where we're at right now. We're building this plan uh, for SEMI and we're interfacing or attempting to interface with our facilities. So the facilities uh, across the province have a similar um, structure. There's an organization of sport facilities or whatever. I'm not sure that's the right term, but uh, they've been given some direction there on where they need to be at. Um, so we need to make our, sure our plans work together with with their plans and for us at semi we've got i think 11 different ice surfaces that we we use so we've got uh some work to do to customize those plans for each of the different uh facilities that we work with but we're embarking on that process right now so uh the semi hockey plan that we are building again work in progress um 
safety is the number one priority in it. Um, that's no different than any other programs that we, we try to deliver. We have safety at the forefront of everything. But obviously in this case, um, that's really enhanced and we take the regulations very seriously that uh, are coming at us from the, from the governing bodies. And that will be, you'll see that throughout the, the program when it comes in. Um, we're putting together a plan that has multiple phases as well. So we're looking at having, uh, you know, a, a phase that we can offer through the through the summer. Should we get some more ice time available, and I'll get onto that in a minute. Um, that might be a little bit more restrictive um, until we move into the you know late summer fall, and we would move into the next phase. So from a phase two to a phase three, uh, and within those phases, we have um, you know a three A and a three B. Uh, that allow for gradually loosening of uh, restrictions around you know numbers of players on the ice and uh, time in between ice times and some of those things. Again, not not uh, uh, compromising on the safety side of it, but uh, sort of um, improving on some of the, the more strict restrictions that are have been in place um, thus far. So we're, we're working on that, um, and hopefully we'll have we'll be able to post that. Uh, for everyone, one of our tasks from that is, is an education campaign and making sure that all the users are aware of what their responsibilities are when they do come to the facility um, and making sure that um, everyone is signing off on uh, their safety plans and those type of things. As everyone is probably aware or hopefully aware, um, we're lucky in hockey related to other sports where our Hockey Canada insurance coverage that we have um, didn't have any exclusions for communicable diseases, I guess. So um, we're covered from that regard where some other sports were hung up on that, uh, that issue and the provincial government had to step in and um, provide some extra relief for them, but hockey was never, never a factor. So um, that a, was a bit of a barrier um, with regards to access and facilities and those type of things, but it, it was never really a hockey issue. So as far as uh, the facilities go, um, we have some good news that uh, we expect Centennial Arena to be uh, putting their ice in actually earlier than they normally do. Um, they don't have other user groups, lacrosse and, and other groups in there uh, this time through the summer. So they're, they're hoping to get their ice in in later July and we'll start to get some access to that. Um, kind of under, start off with under what we call a phase two protocol. So it would be, a little more limited in numbers on ice. Um, I mean, you know, maybe we're looking at 10 to 14 kids on the ice uh, for a nice session to start and gradually loosening those things up. So we're starting to build some, some programming and some plans around that. We don't know exactly what our access is going to be, uh, whether, you know, we share with figure skating or other groups and how many hours we get, but it's good news uh, from that regard. We're excited that, um, that Centennial is ready to partner with us in the city of White Rock in that area. Uh, the private ice rinks that we use, so at, at Great Pacific Forum, at GPF, or um, Excellent Ice, they've already been operating, um, and it, it's a bit of a, there's a bit of a uh, conundrum right now, I guess, where the uh, private arenas are working under a little bit of a different set of, of rules and regulations, and they're all a little bit different right now. Uh, I expect there's going to be streamlining of that coming but uh but the good news is they're up and running and they're running at different sort of phase two uh protocols there um we haven't necessarily access access them that much in the summer for additional programs we don't do a lot of summer programming but uh um, we don't think we'll have any hesitation getting into those facilities once we ramp up our operations uh in the late summer and, and fall um, although we don't have confirmed contracts with them yet, but um, we don't normally at this time of year anyways. Um, Surrey, the city of Surrey, so another uh, big partner with us on ice usage. Um, they're a work in progress, to be honest with you. Um, we don't have official opening dates for their facilities. They've got all their ice out in all of their uh, facilities right now. Um, there is some politics involved if you follow local government uh, in Surrey. Um, budget priorities, etc. But uh, we have met with the, um, the arena management staff or the, the people in charge of arenas, I guess, uh, at the city. Um, and we presented a strong case for them to open um, as, as usual um, in September. So this is a coordinated effort uh, with uh, ourselves and the other minor hockey associations and other sport user groups, figure skating, etc. 
in the city. So we're working uh, working on that. Um, we're very hopeful that uh, things will fall into line, but at this stage, it isn't guaranteed. So if we do need to have a, a step up the pressure on them and have a little bit of adv advocacy campaign, uh, I'm sure we'll let everybody know and uh, we can make sure our, our voice is heard at, um, at the city council level in, in Surrey and that kids are kids are getting an opportunity to be active and that becomes a priority for our, our local city government. Uh, we hope that that is the case there. So, so that's kind of the update there. And as we meet with these facilities, again, we're sharing uh, and syncing up our, our safety plans and our protocols for accessing the, the facilities through the different, uh, through the different phases. And, you know, you know, probably see some of those things posted in the facilities and those when you, when you come to them um, as well as, you know, sent to you beforehand or, or spread around as best we can so everyone's aware of it. So um, that's kind of gets us up to speed of where we're at right now. Um, looking forward, so just what could the future hold for uh, for semi-hockey as we head into the fall? Um, a couple of different scenarios we'll look at. One thing just as a provide, uh, proviso in front of all this is we are expecting um, another information load to come down from Hockey Canada in early July that will have uh, a lot more information around you know, rules and regulations or any specific um, uh, things that we might have to address uh, hockey specific there. But again, uh, it's tough for them to come up with really specific things again, because every region's a little bit different, but they may have a, a few things on there related to rules and regulations. So we're prepared for that. Um, so an options we're looking at, option number one um, that we're looking at, and this is one we're most hopeful for, um, and again, with uh, how well we're doing in the province, um, COVID-related, et cetera, our fingers are crossed that we can move towards this. So, so this is kind of a, a close to normal scenario. Uh, so we're at sort of close to normal, but we can expect enhanced uh, hygiene, safety protocols, uh, and those type of things. But, um, you know, not a, a drastic difference from a, a regular hockey season. So if, that, if we're looking at that, we're looking at being able to play local, local games, um, having a regular, uh, you know, tryouts and evaluations and team formation, that type of thing. Uh, still some question mark on things like body contact. Again, that might come from that Hockey Canada announcement in early July. Um, spectator access into the building, that might be something that uh, continues to be restricted if we're still capped by the, you know, 50 person in a, in a building. We would obviously give priority to players, coaches, and referees and scorekeepers um, so that there'd be some limitations potentially on the number of spectators. Uh, I would expect res very restricted um, tournaments or travel. So, you know, if you're playing games, they would be in the lower mainland regularly scheduled uh, games, not necessarily uh, traveling around the province for, uh, for games or, or well out of the region. Um, and we could probably expect sort of enhanced roles of a of safety person on a team staff, that type of thing, uh, maybe you know, more than one safety person, some of those type of, uh, type of things. But, you know, I say relatively normal, we'd be in teams, we'd be practicing and having a game schedule, that type of a thing. So, so we're hoping that that's where we're at, whether that's September 1st or September 15th or um, you know, October 1st, uh, those are still questions to be answered, but, uh, we hope we're heading in that direction. That's our, our number one option. And, uh, and quite frankly, our easiest one to plan for because it's the most close to normal, uh, option number two that we, that we could be facing or could look at is limitations on games. Um, so right now the, the sort of phase that we're heading into with the via sport is skills and practices. Uh, and, you know, there's a chance that extends further into the season. So, like I said, that, you know, does that end September 15th, September 30th, um, you know, at a later date, we don't know. Um, so that would be, again, um, skill development focus, maybe smaller groups on the ice, practice environment, um, you know, more vigorous physical distancing enforced and, uh, you know, caps on the number of people in the, in the arena, in the facility. And this would force us to modify our, our evaluations and formation of teams and that type of thing. Um, our goal here though, if we're into this stage for any kind of extended period would be to do our best to provide an equivalent sort of value um, for the registration fee. So 
uh, you know, equivalent sort of access to ice time or time on ice, uh, those type of things that you would have had otherwise, just potentially without uh, outside games. So if you're, you know, used to being on the ice a couple times a week um, with the program that you're, you're in, you try to accommodate that. It might be with professional coaches rather than volunteer coaches, uh, that type of thing. And if you're, uh, you know, uh, in the rep stream or, and you're looking for more ice time, our goal would be to try and provide the option to um, pay, you know, a rep fee like you would normally to a team fee to, uh, to beef up the amount of time on ice that you'd be looking at there. Uh, from a skill development perspective. So that's kind of the goal that we're working on there. Uh, it has to align with the access to ice and facilities, but we think that that would come together if we're in that situation um, as well. So, and then the option, call it option Z, because we hope that we don't get to that, but this is if there's a, you know, a severe second wave or uh, anything along those lines, whether we get a government order that says no sporting activity or no indoor no indoor activity, no indoor sports or something like that, um, which we certainly never hope to get to. But if that's the case, then we're looking at obviously refunds um, and those type of things for you. We don't have any intention of holding on to, to people's money if we're not providing programming. So just want to be clear on that aspect. Um, so that kind of leads into some specifics for our programming at SEMI. So the, the first one sort of comes up on the calendar for us is our hockey school, which is scheduled right now for the end of August um, at Centennial. So again, the good news is Centennial putting their ice in early kind of um, uh, opens the door to make sure that we have uh, an opportunity to run our hockey school, but we may have to do some, some modifications to it so we're kind of planning that we may have to have smaller group sizes so instead of you know 24 kids in a group we might be limited to uh, under 20 that type of thing so we may have to spread people into different uh, sessions um, the scrimmages that we would uh, you know normally offer in the evening we may not be able to offer those so we would sort of transfer those times into an overflow uh, skill development sessions that type of thing we may have to overflow into the week before uh, or week after, but our goal would be to try and accommodate everybody that is uh, is registered or looking for a camp um, with a similar a similar program. So that would be the that would be the goal we'd be at there. And again, you'd expect um, increased uh, hygiene protocols and all those different things as you as you enter the facility and, uh, and you know be subject to some of the low. Um, as far as rep evaluations go. If we're in the, uh, you know, the option one, we're getting into our team formation, that type of thing, we would follow a similar, as similar a process as we normally do to kind of get to our teams uh, in a regularly scheduled time. If we are restricted to no games or anything for an extended period of time, um, what we would do is, is just uh, alter a little bit of how we offer. This is for the rep evaluation side of things uh, for those that have signed up for the rep evaluation. Um, what we would do is essentially extend our uh, phase one of our rep tryout. So if you're familiar with the, the process for the evaluation, we have a, a phase one, which normally is kind of one day uh, or two days where people come into the program based on where they played last year in usually one of three groups. Um, and they do a, a skills day um, as the first phase of the evaluation. There's a chance that that skills day might be skills days. Um, but you would be grouped accordingly in those, uh, those similar groupings, and we would just pull whatever number we're permitted to have on the ice out of those, uh, out of those groups. So that would be the plan there. And then as soon as we get the green light to move towards games and, uh, and team formation, we would be able to pretty quickly move into phase two and three uh, of the evaluations and get to uh, get the team selection relatively quickly. So that's kind of the plan. Uh, plan for that um, there and that would be like I say if you're uh, if you're in the rep stream you're going to get a bunch more skill development prior to the team selection which isn't necessarily a bad thing if you're in the in the C division side you're getting some some practices and skill development and those type of things um, in smaller groups um, for that uh, for that stretch as we move through there what we would do is majority of those sessions we would have professionally coached. So with our skill development staff would, would lead a, a large majority of those sections. We have a few um, uh, volunteers or parent coaches involved, but for the most part, it would be uh, 
professionally instructed uh, programs. And again, um, we would be trying to provide as best we can that equivalency um, of your registration fee or what you're used to in terms of frequency uh, on the ice, that type of thing. Uh, we may be able to enhance that with off-ice activity as well. So if we're, you know, we're getting, think we're getting squeezed a little bit in the amount of ice time and those sort of things we have, we would look at options and saying, you know, do we do a, an off-ice session, an off-ice stick handling program, um, you know, once a week or once every couple of weeks for the kids. Those are some other things that we can look at. I do think that we are better set up for this kind of experience if we have to go to it than any other minor hockey association around um, with the staff that we have um, with regards to uh, skill development people, the flexibility that we have there, the organization that we have to be able to pull these things off. Um, I'm really comfortable that uh, Sammy, better than anybody, would, uh, would move through that phase. Um, you know, wouldn't be seamlessly or wouldn't be necessarily exactly what you're used to, but I think we'd be able to uh, pull it together quite successfully. Uh, the other one would be tournaments. So tournaments in general, I think, are going to be something that we really shouldn't count on this year. Uh, uh, most of the, the tournaments that, uh, that exist are things that take a long time to organize and budget for, uh, that type of thing. And with all the unknowns, a lot of the associations are just saying, you know what, we're not going to plan for uh, – for a tournament, put together tournament committees, uh, that type of thing. Um, probably not an expectation of, um, of moving around the, the province or obviously not going to go to the U.S. for tournaments, which we, a lot of teams normally do. So um, there may be some local tournaments that come together, particularly in the second half or later part of the year, and, and we can adapt and prepare for those. We host a, a big March Madness tournament for our um, novice age kids which is a big hit and successful right at the end of the season we're still holding out some hope that uh, by March that, uh, that that would be an event that we could offer but uh, uh, we'll have to see when we when we get there so um, so those are the sort of the specific things that we're contingency planning around um, a little bit there um, as far as some questions that came in beforehand I think I addressed a lot of them but I'll go over a couple of them um, goalies, we always have goalie parents out there that ask questions and we did get a few of those coming in and we haven't forgotten about uh, goalies so we do have uh, some plans for them as well if we are in this uh, extended skill development phase we will be providing goalie instruction and opportunities for the goalies to get uh, uh, on the ice and get um, some individualized position specific um, instruction there whether it's as a group of goalies um, you know, in a clinic type setup or having a goalie coach on the ice with uh, a skill development group at the same time. So those things are all being coordinated as well. Um, there is a chance that there are some special rules coming down for goalies as well. Um, we have this maybe in this next Hockey Canada uh, thing that comes out. Um, we have seen some, some things maybe with the expanded goal crease uh, those type of things just to, to make sure the safety and just if we have to have distancing uh, on the ice that the goalies are um, extra protected I guess from from that regard so we may see some things there um, that would come down so we're waiting to hear on that um, some questions around body checking I think I mentioned that earlier that um, still a bit of an unknown that may that will come down from Hockey Canada there's a chance that uh, um, even though we're permitted to play games, they may make them all non-contact or non-body checking. So that will include your bench and midget rep that are normally used to body checking. Uh, we don't know for sure. Right now, our thought is that it would be like usual, but uh, there's a chance that that could be a restriction that uh, that comes down. Um, questions around special equipment. Um, you know, there's some, there's hours come out with a new mask, I think, uh, those type of things. We haven't seen anything specific with regards to mandated um, equipment. Uh, the first release from Hockey Canada had no mention of that. Um, is there a chance that that comes in the next one? Perhaps. Uh, I don't necessarily see it being an issue, uh, but we will put that information um, out to you guys as quick as we can uh, once that comes through, if we get any information there. Uh, the other one that we had questions on, and we always get questions on this time of year, is how many teams, how many rep teams are we having in each division? Um, as I mentioned earlier, our, our registration numbers are really, really strong. 
Um, we're just starting to kind of dive into the breakdown of where we're at there, but I would expect um, that we're looking at similar uh, team offerings that we had last year, assuming we can get to that uh, team stage. So we'll be looking at four Adam Rep uh, teams, uh, the five, uh, I got to use the right term, sorry, U11, uh, which is Adam is called now, uh, U13, which Pee Wee is called. Um, would be looking at the five teams with kind of that hybrid team option that we looked at uh, last year that was successful. Um, our U15, which is Bantam, there's a real good chance we could have three teams uh, there, which would be one more than we had last year in that age group. So that would be cool. Uh, and Midget is kind of, uh, Midget's always a crapshoot because lots of kids are trying out for major Midget or zone teams or junior B and those type of things. But uh, it looks like there's enough for two for sure. Uh, and potentially uh, a third team in the U18 uh, category there. So I hope that gives people some uh, information uh, as to where we're at. Like I say, we don't have a total crystal ball, crystal ball as to, to what things look like, but uh, we wanted to provide uh, a little bit of an update in the process and, and some idea with, um, with where we're heading. Um, some of our challenges, I guess, that just to, to let you guys know that we are facing is we haven't uh, locked things down with uh, particularly city of Surrey. So, so that's one where we may need to, um, you know, some information might come out in the next few weeks on, um, on delays to the putting in of ice in Surrey city facilities. Uh, and we may need to put some pressure on there, but, uh, we're, we're pretty confident that that will, will come through, uh, will come through there. And then we will share our sort of safety plans and safety protocols as we get them built with the facilities over the next few weeks. So everyone is up to speed kind of on, on where we're at, where we are there. And then we'll start to follow our normal kind of processes of getting our division managers uh, in place. And they'll be communicating to you as we head up to the start of the season as to when start dates would be um, for your different programs that you're in, when rep tryout or rep evaluations would be scheduled for you. Um, and for those of you that are scheduled in the, or signed up for our, our summer hockey school, we'll start to communicate with you over the next uh, few weeks as we head into July here of exactly what the ice times would look like um, if we have to move people around to some different ice times than the, you know, the particular schedule that they may have signed up for. We'll try and give as much notice as we can as we, as we learn what, uh, what we're looking at uh, from an ice perspective there. So that would kind of be the next steps in terms of communication um, out to everybody. Uh, as usual, if you ever have questions or need to find out any information, please reach out. Uh, please reach out to us, and and we'll try our best to answer it. So we'll go through the the chat that's been going on here and and uh, try and address those specific questions if we can, either in a communication or get back to people on on that on those ones. Um, but uh, we're we've worked really hard to get where we are, and uh, we're optimistic that. Um, but we'll have a great season uh, coming up, even if it is going to be a little bit different than uh, what we're all used to. We all want kids on the ice. Everybody wants some normalcy uh, to their lives. Um, we know kids are real eager to be physically active, and it's important for, for them from uh, all kinds of different um, ways, mental health, physical health, um, social, all those kind of areas, and we want to play a big part uh, in that. And, we hope that uh, all our partners agree with us on that front. So, again, thanks for your time. Feel free to reach out to us at any time that um, you need to uh, get any information from us or if you have any questions. Help us spread the word on new player registration. We'd love to get uh, as many um, uh, new people into the association as we as we can, particularly at the, the younger end, which would be 2015 born kids this year. Um, we'd love to get them in there as well. Again, we've recorded this um, presentation, so we'll post it uh, on our website. If you know people that wanted to be here that couldn't be here today, you can point them in that direction as well. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Uh, 152 attendees, I think. Um, maybe online is the way to go for all of our communications. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy your uh, next few weeks of uh, hopefully some summer. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Thanks, Dave.
Thanks, Dave. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, Dave. All the best, Dave. Take care. Thanks, Dave and team, for all you're doing. Have a great summer. Stay safe. Thanks, Dave, for all the hard work. Thanks, Dave.